Here goes nothing. Three, two, one, pull. Welcome to another computer repair video. This one is one I've been dreading. D do you see any of the holes in this keyboard? That's because this keyboard isn't held in with screws, it's held in with plastic welds. I really don't want to do this job because I hate replacing plastic welded whatever welded keyboards, and it has a backlight layer. Just to make things more difficult, a backlight layer. So, what are you supposed to do? Well, you know, you're supposed to fix it. <laughs> That's the whole point. So we're gonna set this keyboard and backlight layer aside, and open up this, an HP, everything is too tiny to read. H, uh, HP 15-AU010WM. If you can read it, it's right there. I wager you can't. That's okay, don't worry. I can't either. First thing I notice, that looks like a hidden screw. Now why would you have all these screw holes and have a hidden screw right here? Why, why would you put a sticker over a screw hole, right? And the answer is, they didn't. HP's just stupid. Apparently. <clears throat> so let's get cracking. These screws on the front, well, guess what? They come out at an angle. Why? Because HP hates you. Of course. See, anything that some engineer in some random foreign country that assembles computers decided to do is automatically attributable to a hatred for me. Because I'm not narcissistic, I'm just practical. Anyway, these are at like a 45 degree angle and it's really awkward when you're used to unscrewing things at not a 45 degree angle all the time. Uh, come on, you're, you're allowed to come out. There you go. Ugh, what a nuisance, okay. Come on, get out of there. So yeah, I'm obviously not a fan. There's a possibility there's screws under here. In fact, let's just check it right now. Let's find out if they're hiding screws under here. They don't appear to be. So that's great because that's one of the peeves I have about these kinds of computers. It's hiding screws under there, but look at that. This number one Phillips head screwdriver doesn't fit. I need a smaller one. And I don't know where I put it. So, let's find one. Huh. Number zero, Phillips head screwdriver. Instead. <clears throat> I don't prefer this screwdriver, but these holes are so narrow that despite having a number one-ish size screw head, you can't fit a number one, what is going on down there? You can't fit a number one Phillips down the hole. Which is especially annoying when you need magnetics to get the screws out. So I'm gonna magnetize this screwdriver with a hard drive magnet. Careful not to put it up against anything. All right. <laughs> Look at that. Now, the screws are all the... I think this one's broken. I, nope. It just didn't want to come out. There we go. These corner ones are in very tight, and they're probably hinge screws. So that makes sense. And look, they're accessible. Oh, oh, and they're different. The corner screws are different. They are black and a little fatter, so we'll keep those. Yep, mm-hmm. I bet this comes out. Oh look, it does come out. And did I have to take it out? Probably. There are no screws here. So that's a good thing. And I whacked the camera real good, didn't I? Yes, I did. <clears throat> All right. Oh. 
open it up. This top plate needs to come off, so get your pry tool and pry at it. Here, let me give you more brightness. Pry, just get it in the seam. You don't even have to get it in very hard to get the little clips to let go. Yeah, as long as you separate it a little bit, the clips will pop right out. Yep, over here. Yep, try to be gentle because some of these areas are very thin and the plastic will break apart instead of come loose. And you probably don't want to break the plastic. You just want to show it who's boss, you know. So let's get this. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, just run it through at a little bit of an angle and all these things just pop right off. <sighs> Whether it actually comes apart is another story. But in theory, we can now just pull and everything will come right apart. In practice, it's probably not that easy. It's probably a hidden screw somewhere or some other nonsense. Yeah, it's not letting go on one side here. So let's see. Looks like there are clips inside of it, like actually in the middle. <clears throat> now, I checked one half of this strip. I did not check the other. Is there a screw hidden underneath this? Look at this. Look. Look. There was one right there. There is one hidden right here. I hate that. That is so frustrating. Does it come apart now? Yes. That or I broke it. But, no, I probably just got it apart. Okay, we're in. So this is where your optical drive it lives here so that's cool here's your battery mind you this is the back of the unit uh, there's some dust in here we'll probably clean this at some point but all of this stuff has to come out and that's really sad so get ripping flick this hard drive cable here let me get you closer you need to be able to see this action here all right Get just a little focus action here, too. Yeah, there you go, baby. That's better. All right, now, hard drive cable here. And yank the whole hard drive set up. It, it, there's a pair of little spots right here that the hard drive's kind of stuck into. So what you need to do is actually pull it up here, pivot out, get it out of the work area. There's a board here that I don't think is in the way. We'll find out in a minute. The keyboard's underneath this metal frame, which is held in with, oh look, plastic welds. So we know we have to get the battery out. Let's get the battery out. So here's how you get the battery out. See that screw right there? That's pretty, isn't it? Look at that. Come on, unscrew, big boy. It's a little stubborn. It doesn't want to actually come out. It may have a retention ring. I'd be a little surprised, but it very well might. So there's two screws here, and you see there's an arrow pointing to a third one here. All right, that screw came all the way out. These other screws, yeah, I think they're being held a little bit, but they don't... No, they're not letting go. They're not coming back out, so... I'm just going to leave them alone. Go ahead and pull the battery wire out of the motherboard. It's right here. A couple fingernails will let you rock it out. Battery. Set the battery aside. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be terrible. I can already tell. So, you have a motherboard here that needs to come out. And basically everything is attached to it. Let's go ahead and get this extremely obvious cable out here. 
Yeah. And this looks like speakers. Go ahead and unhook them. Flip this up and unhook your display. Actually, it looks pretty difficult to get out. Um, come on. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove this, what looks like a speaker assembly. Wow. No, I'm not, apparently. Um, the other speaker is over here somewhere, so... Can we get this board out as one big unit? <sighs> there is a lot going on in here. Alright, let's start from this end. Let's pull this. This is your... Oh, it's held in by the sticker. But this is your... Supposedly... Oh, come on now. This is supposedly your keyboard. You know, the one we're going to replace. So it especially needs to come out. Some jerk put the sticker right over it, though. So, what are we going to do? We're going to see if we can get this sticker up. Not off all the way, just off of this connector. And pull the keyboard out. That should be your keyboard. Yep. This one. Pull. So, there's one, there's one. Uh, there's a cable here by the RAM. Looks like your backlight. Yeah, we're probably going to replace the backlight layer since we were given one. Let's see. The plates for the CPU and GPU. Let's see. And the fan too, maybe? Look like they're all stuck down. So let's go ahead and get this screw out down here. You'll see there's a screw down here. That released a lot. Okay, it actually looks like this CPU fan is anchoring down the board. So let's go ahead and pull all these CPU fan screws. It also looks like the CPU fan screws for that and the motherboard items and the speaker are all identical. So I'm putting them all in the same place because they all look the same. Here's your CPU fan. It has a header here that I can't get to with my nails. So I'll have to gently pull on the wire itself. And yeah, this isn't going very well. There we go. Okay. How's that heat sink look? Ah, oh, it looks gross. Of course it does. Okay, yes, the fan was anchoring most of the board down. There's one more screw. It's all the way down here, if you can even see it. All the way down here by the wireless card. Yep, that's it. Motherboard and fan screws out. The motherboard is largely loose now. Uh, we need to get these Wi-Fi... I hate taking these off because then they have to be put back on, but get these Wi-Fi antennas popped loose and unthread them from the speaker here. And that, there's one more wire I see under the Wi-Fi card here. Hang on. Let's take the Wi-Fi card out. That will have a different screw than the rest of the things. So go ahead and set that screw and that card aside somewhere. There you go. I bet that's probably the power jack. It looks like it is. That's the power jack down here. So let's go ahead and get that jack out. There we go. Now, what else is running to the board? We have this USB board header here and this one here. Let's actually go ahead, since these are easier to access here, and pull them, both of these. I'll go ahead and get both of these unhooked, these flat cables, and we'll just put them with the motherboard. Motherboard pivots up and out of the way. Oh. One nice blow on the heat sink, and that was disgusting. All right. This metal plate has to come off. 
anything on this metal plate has to come off. While we're in here, we will check the hinges. Hinges don't look great. They don't look great at all. In fact, that looks pretty broken. And I bet that looked bad. Let's go ahead and take these hinge screws out. I think the hinges might not be in the best of shape. Hinge screws are much bigger than motherboard screws. They're pretty easy to figure out. But it actually looked like those hinge mounts might be damaged. Mm. Mm. Get that in there pry against the mount a bit here to get a little more leverage that is insanely difficult why is that so difficult oh, look at that it did come loose but the hinge is so tough oh man okay this other hinge over here needs to get loose too we need to find out if these hinge mounts are busted because if they are, I'm going to glue them like I do every hinge mount. Go ahead and get all the hinge screws out of here. Mm. Yep, they're all identical. Uh, so what's going on here? Yep, yeah, I got it. Okay. Okay, so the hinge mount actually is not damaged. What it is, is this part of the computer without the base is extremely flexible. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's very flexy. So, I'll go ahead and get this other speaker out of the way because the wires are running through that metal plate where the keyboard is. And Yep, the speakers over here have the same littler screw. And is there one or two screws holding the speaker down? It looks like there may be a second one somewhere. Actually, I think the hinge is holding this speaker down. Let's get it between the power jack here. Pull up and see what's going on. Yeah, yeah these hinge mounts look okay. This speaker almost certainly was being held in by that hinge mount. So let's go ahead and get the speaker wire out. Speakers, set them aside. They're magnetic. Try not to put them on your hard drive. Not that it matters that much. Now, at this point, here's your display cable. It's in the way, too. And, yeah, at this point, you can divorce the screen from everything. Now, this is interesting. Look at this. Look at this. So what's going on here? So there's an adhesive here that never got peeled. So is this the original part? Is this original or is this a replacement? Did someone already replace this? I seriously doubt it because there's plastic welds everywhere. Anyway, we still need to get all these boards out. So let's pull this USB accessory board here. It has a silver screw that looks a little different. I'm going to set it aside. Um, silver screw can go over here. I have there's this accelerometer board over here. I don't think it's a problem. It has a huge flat screw. I don't think it's a problem but I'm going to go ahead and take it out just so that it's not in the work area. At this point, the power jack uh, maybe can just come out. Um, it's not really in the way. I'm going to leave it. This board, however, is in the way. What is this board over here? I have no idea. But I'll find out, won't I? Ah, it's the SD card reader, and it's disgusting. Oh, yeah, that was bad. Okay. 
All right. So here's your touchpad here. We don't want to mess with this touchpad at all. This touchpad thing here, that this this needs to be left alone. This whole touchpad square. What we need is everything that's under this metal plate. The problem is that means that this metal plate needs to come out. As you can see, it is held in with a metric ton of these plastic welds, and there's this plastic insulation layer on top of it as well. Now, oh god. Full disclosure here, I have not ever actually replaced a keyboard in one of these computers. So you, my dear friend, are kind of learning along with me. There's an adhesive holding this insulating layer, but let's get it off so we can get this thing out of here and yeah. Um, on second thought, that power jack needs to come out. Let's just go ahead and get it out. Use whatever is at your disposal here. This power jack right here needs to come out. Uh, it's just held in with a couple plastic clips. You don't want to break them, but get one to let go, and it'll be easy as pie. All right. Now we're in trouble. You have plastic welds everywhere holding this metal shield in place, and the metal shield is certainly holding the keyboard. So we need to break all of these plastic welds here, which basically means we need to pry this thing until they all rip up. The problem is this. All of these plastic welds are going to have to be replaced with epoxy later. And that sucks. That's the worst part of this whole thing, is that those will have to be redone with epoxy. And I'm not looking forward to it. So. There's tons of these things. Look at this. Tons of these things. And I'm tempted just to yank, but we need this metal shield to not be damaged. So what can we do? It's a good question. When I figure it out, I'll let you know. But every plastic weld has to come out. Otherwise, we can't get this keyboard out. So I'll figure out what to do about these individual plastic welds because they're very strong. And I'll be right back. Wait for me. Ooh boy. Well, guess what? I figured out what I'm going to do. All that I can do is take a pry tool, right? And you stick it under the edge here where these plastic welds are, get as much leverage as you can, and just pry against them so that they rip right out. And guess what? You have to do that for all of them. And the metal will bend. So it's going to be even more painful than you think. The main thing here is you want to get it to lift up around the plastic welds, but you don't want to melt, or not melt, but bend your metal frame too much to do it. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to cooperate all that well. So there's a good chance you're going to pop these plastic welds and then have to sort of bend some stuff back in place. But the only thing you can really do is get your pry tool underneath this godforsaken thing. Whoop. And, well, pry. Pry as close as you can to the weld, but look, see the metal's bending. So in that event, you can also try to help it along but the best thing to do if you can the best thing to do is to get it beyond the weld somewhere and just put the force on it right beside the weld but you don't want to bend the metal it's such a pain this is the worst thing ever look I've already bent the crap out of it and eh, well so go around the edge and do this and I'm I'm not gonna record this because I definitely don't want to edit it later but I'm gonna go around and pop every last one of these plastic welds and get to the keyboard and resume when I'm back at the actual keyboard alright you crazy kids <clears throat> here we go I got several of the welds taken care of so they're no longer holing it I switched over from my pry tool 
that I normally use to this long screwdriver that has a kind of a rampy end on it very narrow flathead but it, it sort of ramps up and I used it to pop the welds around the edges and some of the welds in the middle too but there's still a bunch of plastic welds so what I'm gonna try to do now since I've gotten enough welds that I can get a hand underneath this I'm gonna try to just rip it like a big old strip of uh, woo yeah like that so we're just gonna rip it in one go see if we can make this job a lot shorter I'm holding it down as best as I can but you know there's only so much I can actually do um, here goes nothing three two one pull and there it is once you have enough plastic welds gone you can just rip it and that's the end of it now the keyboard is held in with plastic welds too how many of those do you think failed not enough right so push look at that push a corner of the keys here and guess what keyboard same deal hold it pull as quick as you can and there's your old keyboard look I accidentally pried a key off through the other side there's your old keyboard while you're at it go ahead and uh, <clears throat> check it out see how well these things match up I do not know if this is some generic backlight or what but the uh, plastic welds match up generally looks like there's a fold in this one to get it over here so we'll need to sort of mimic that then we've got a keyboard here let's make sure the keyboard fits Yep, the, uh, let's get this backlight layer. Maybe we can take it off. Usually there's adhesive holding it on anyway, so... Let's get this backlight layer off. There we go. Alright, let's check this keyboard against the new keyboard. Alright. Looks like... Yep, it's pretty similar. It's not identical. Pretty similar. New keyboard has some tape protecting the connector. Um, yeah, it looks like they have the same connector, about the same length cable, maybe. Yeah, once the fold is put in it, it's the same. Okay, good. We have an identical keyboard. What a pain. I didn't actually get the part number. I ordered it basically on spec. Speculation, for those who are wondering. So there's the old stuff, and it's going to the trash. Thank God. Now, yeah, look at all this junk. There's all the junk from the keyboard because people are disgusting. They don't even know how nasty they are. Every, every fleck of skin, every little ounce of dirt and food and stuff that they've ever consumed is floating around in here. Look at this. There's Some of these plastic welds are actually not completely ripped apart and that's going to be a problem <clears throat> this one for example needs to just be a plastic post see that extra there that's going to cause us pain and there's a lot of these it's not just one or two some of them it looks like the keyboard ripped instead of the plastic weld so you may end up having to go through here and just destroy some of these remaining welds that didn't cooperate so anyway, let's get a trash can, this is horrible, and sweep all this garbage into it. Uh, uh. Yeah, that's a great big milk from me, Daddy-o. All right. We have a new keyboard that should match, and it should fall right in place, but chances are that there's a bunch of plastic welds that are real hard to see, Maybe we can exploit them, actually. The ones that didn't rip, yeah, they kind of feel like if you push, you can sort of snap the keyboard through them, maybe. Or maybe I can do this. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. 
see if he can make them work for you. All right. Yeah, some of these welds that didn't pop, we can kind of use them to snap the new keyboard in place and actually retain it, it looks like. Yeah, uh, that one's not going to work, though. This, this is what I've been contending with here. This, you see why I didn't really look forward to this job. This, this is painful. There's a rectangular one here, a circular one here, and all of them are annoying, regardless of their nature. So, let's try to slide these in up here so that I don't have to redo them. All right, poppity poppity pop pop pop. And I need all the welds to come through, all the remaining posts here to come through. Now I don't strictly need the keyboard itself welded down, so to speak, because the truth is that the metal frame will hold it all together. But, that's the metal frame. Yep, see the keyboard? Look, I actually broke the framing there. That's unfortunate. Can't do much about it. Try to fix it enough, and the customer will, will be able to use it. <clears throat> All I care about is that the customer is able to use their computer when I give it back to them. Um, everything else is just kind of secondary, so... Yep. It looks like that's about as good as that gets. I don't think I can make that fit any better than I am smashing it like this. So, get the welds as good as they're going to get. We need the backlight layer, which supposedly is adhesive. Looks like it probably is. And let's peel that off and go ahead and do some sticking. Get that sticking action going on here. Ugh. Ooh, sticky. Sticky, sticky. Alright. Yuck. Alright. So I remember it goes like this. We need to match it up with these. And... Yeah. And... Dude. Come on. Come on. There we go. So the sticky part makes it difficult. <laughs> but having all of these plasti welds to kind of line it up against helps a lot. Okay. Get the wire. Now the wire on the other one, if you'll recall, did this thing where it kind of went under and back over. Um, I'm back, I haven't thrown it away for real. So, let's look at it. It, they had it folding under itself. They folded it under itself and then back over and then back over again. It's some really complicated crap. It looks like theirs went that way in the first place. So let's look at this, let's see. All right, the metal is here. On this one, the metal is here. It also looks like there's a slight difference. This one has retention tabs, this one does not. Let's see... But they probably can be made to work together. At worst, we'll cut these retention tabs off. So... We need this over here. So what are we gonna do? Are we gonna... Fold it over and back over? I'm not sure. But... It looks like we have to do something like that. But I hate doing that, so I'm just going to leave it alone for now. The metal's in the right direction. If I have to do that later, I will. In fact, let's do this. This is already in place, right? Alright, let's check the frame. Let's see if this metal frame... Oh, I have it backwards, don't I? Or do I? Alright, let's check, let's check. Nope, this is the correct direction. So if I was to lay this frame down right now, that actually comes out right there. There's enough hole there that we can use it that way if we want to. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm going to go ahead and just put that piece of tape somewhere to retain this so it stays out of the way a bit. There we go. Now, 
This is the sucky part. This whole frame has to come back and be put back in place. After we just ripped it out and it's all bent up. Look at that, look at that, look at that. All these plastic welds have to be redone. And there's tons of them. They are everywhere. You know, some of them might stay together, but a good portion of them may not. So, uh, it's not really that badly bent, but bend anything back that got bent up. It's pretty thin, so it's easy to bend this stuff up. Yeah, bend it all kind of back the way it needs to be. <clears throat> Ultimately, the way that you fix this is you have to glue these welds back down. They, they have to be epoxied. There is no other way to do this. So any of them that are bent too far up, you'll have to bend them back down. And at this point, it's, <laughs> it's just a crap epoxy job. So, old reliable Loctite plastics. But here's the catch. I'm going to have to do an epoxy job on this, but something has to hold it. It's not good enough to just epoxy this. Everything involved is so flimsy that we're going to need to use a spring clamp or two to hold it all in place because it won't stay in place by itself otherwise. So I'm going to just go ahead and clamp some stuff together here. Now the problem, the other problem, is there's a keyboard on this other side. So the clamp needs to not clamp the keyboard, but rather the actual frame. And ideally not smush the keys too hard. Ah, there we go. So. Yeah, it, it's, it's not going to go very well, is it? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get these welds smushed down as best as I can. Alright. Oh, you hear them cracking? Get them smushed down as best as I can. I don't want to smush the ones that the keyboard's in. But I'm going to smush these other welds right here. And they are flat, flat. So what I will do is for this round of epoxy, and I'll go ahead and epoxy this side. In fact, it looks like that kind of helps some of this other stuff go down, but I'm going to go ahead and epoxy these right here. Maybe even get a clamp on them. I'm not sure yet. Go ahead and epoxy them. Clip. I'm going to put some screwdrivers in here to level it out. Sneak a screwdriver there, maybe a screwdriver there, I don't know. That helps like none. Okay, do this. Alright, that way at least the stress is similar. Put a screwdriver here for good measure. Nope, that makes it kind of arc, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm playing with it to try and find a way to get all this to go together, but I think in the end, it's going to have to go like that. Yeah. So it looks like bending and flattening is the best way to go. Let's go ahead and do that. Put this here. Use another one to make a, an application stick. Now anything else that looks like the welds have just sort of fallen in place, I'll go ahead and I'll use that. All right. I'm going to roll this piece of paper up here. I'll show you. You're going to love this. And what timeliness. The battery in my camera is getting a little low. I've used it to record a couple other jobs and haven't charged it since. So it needs charging. So I'll do this and be done for a while. Snap as many of these welds as you can in place. Just, just jam the boogers as hard as you can. There we go. That is beautiful. Okay. Boom. I'll put this away for now. 
get my homemade applicator stick, just a sticky, a super sticky post-it, fold it over a bunch of times, and I like to give it one more crease at the very end, just so that it has a little more integrity while I use it. Mix it up. Mix up that epoxy. Mix it up, mix it up. And once you've got your epoxy nicely mixed up, mm, that's nice. It smells terrible. Please remember, if you use epoxy or any other kind of strong adhesive that has to cure and emits fumes like this, you really need to ventilate the place. I have a fan running. But yeah, just give it a little thin layer, <laughs> as thin as this plastic epoxy can be anyway. Just give it a little thin layer, just enough to kind of rebuild what the plastic weld used to be. Little dot. I mean, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much at all to do this, but it does kind of need to be there. Yep. Just enough. And there's a lot of these little welds, so whatever you do, it's it's not like it's not like one weld not holding quite well enough is going to cause a major catastrophe. Strictly speaking, you could probably get away with only redoing half of these. Um, in this particular instance, however, I am a little worried about this not holding up. So I'm trying to get all of these welds that I can nice and rebuilt. I should clarify, I'm not worried about this not holding up. The truth is that this metal frame is what a lot of screws go into, but the plastic frame takes screws too. So to some extent, you know, this doesn't matter massively. Um, the plastic sandwich that is the bottom half of the computer will still kind of sort of hold itself together. I really should have pulled out cotton swabs for this one, I think. Anyway, it, it'll hold itself together without you redoing these plastic welds uh, terribly accurately. But, the problem, the problem, is that even, even with that, I still just want to do as, best, as good of a job as I can. It's, it's a quality issue for me. I worry that if I don't redo these welds, well enough that this stuff's all just gonna fall apart. Like you've got a weld right there that holds the keyboard and the backlight layer on. Like it's all this stuff. Yeah. But it's kinda like I said, it it's not that it's gonna just not work out if you have all this stuff not put together well enough. I mean, it, it, it's still gonna... the screws will hold it. But... the plastic welds aren't there for no reason. Let's just put it that way. So... I'll lay one or two down and... let the chips fall with MA, as they say. <sighs> Yeah, see, there's too much flex right here in the middle. I don't think those will hold properly. Yeah, now here's what I'm going to do. I notice that the metal frame over here is not holding itself quite right. So what I'm going to do is put a hinge screw in to hold that corner of the frame down. And that makes all that stuff over there hold better. There we go. And we will clamp there, I think. And to make it equal, put a screwdriver there. And, yeah, get the idea. So, if I put a clamp there, that will actually let me just put a nice, thin strip all the way down here to rebuild all these individual little welds in a row. 
Like I say, they're not there for no reason. I'd really like for them to be rebuilt. The ones that are over here on the tabs on the end, those are definitely getting redone. Nice. Yep. I'm sure you can see that. That's very nice as well. Okay. Yeah. There's plastic welds here. And since we have the clamp here, it'll hold all this stuff. All that will hold up nicely. Yeah, finish that row. Just finish that whole row there. The epoxy's already starting to cure on me, which is kind of a problem. Because once it cures, it's much harder to distribute. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get these. See a couple here. Yeah. And now, the trick is, I don't have a bunch of clamps, and the epoxy hardens way too fast. So I have to rebuild these welds, then move the clamp after they've cured a bit, come back and do more welds. So this is not going to be a quick process. This is a procedure where you have to do part of it and move on. I don't think that's actually holding very well either. I should not have put any down here yet. Unfortunately, I already have, so I think what I will do is go ahead and lay some down and just hold it manually for a bit. Yep, now this stuff has to cure. I need to get it off my fingers, too. But it, it's just going to take a bit to cure. Enough that it will hold. This is supposed to be five minutes setting. And it's already been more than five minutes, I think. So, let's go ahead and get this out of here. Yeah, see the original ones I did down here? Now they're not quite right. That's the problem. <sighs> Whatever. Well, like I said before, the sandwich will take care of it eventually. But for now... Mm. Well, we'll just have to hope for the best. I'll move on to the others, but... You, you can see how to do this. You don't you you really don't need any more instruction. Redo these plastic welds as best you can. Go around the whole thing, get anything that looks like a plastic weld and give it a little zip of uh, plastic bonding epoxy. So I'll be using this again later. Uh, it says 20 minutes on the package actually that's interesting. Anyway, I'm not worried about it. Come back later and finish the job. Um, keyboards in, you know, reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. Should be able to figure that out pretty easily. There we go. All right, I'm going to finish this up on my own time, but thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. I hope this helps. Take care. There comes a time in the life of all people when we must ask ourselves, could epoxying down a keyboard plate possibly suck anymore and the answer to that question is no no it couldn't this is awful look at this nonsense epoxy 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 I'm using my coffee to weight down the metal plate in the hopes that these things will stay put. Look, that needs more force than I can apply with my finger. Oh, that's annoying. It's all so frustrating. Look at this nonsense. Uh, and I have to do another one today. Manufacturers who do this are bad. Just use some tiny screws, for the love of God. Use some teeny tiny screws. 
instead of this nonsense, just put some screws down, dudes. Screws. Nah, screws. You know, the little, the little rotary inclined planes. I am sick of doing this. Uh, screws. How I miss thee. Let me count the ways. Every one of these little plastic welds that I'm having to redo. <laughs> yeah, this sucks. All right. If you're doing one of these keyboards, uh, now you know how, and I'm, I feel bad for you, son. Something, something, 99 problems, and I'm not doing all this. All right. Good luck. Take care. <laughs>